Hey everyone, Solar Primal here, and welcome back to another Pokemon video. There have been features and mechanics changed, added, or even removed from Pokemon games over the years. Sometimes it is to try something new, or to improve upon other things in the game. Here is a list of things that I would like to see changed or brought back for a Sinnoh remake. Keep in mind that these are my opinions, yours may vary. The Battle Frontier. Now, not necessarily the place, but more of the island itself. This island brought a post-game story involving Heatran and Team Galactic, which actually helped close off their storyline rather than leaving it open for interpretation. A new move tutor, the survival area where you could battle your rival's increasingly stronger team, the battleground to rematch gym leaders and other significant NPCs. Character customization. It's become a common thing in all the new games, so it would be a shame to lose it in a game like they did in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The Sinnoh Underground. I've talked in length regarding this in my previous video, so in short, the Underground could be a huge update on the current system and could be further utilized with current game mechanics. The Pokemon Super Contests. This one I'm leaning to more maybe than anything, Though I really did enjoy the upgrade the Pokemon contest got in Sinnoh when it came out in Generation 4. They added dressing up and even dancing to the minigame. Now I know that sounds silly, but it definitely made it more enjoyable and a bit more challenging. Though I will admit when it came back in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it didn't quite have the same appeal. Oh, come on. You suck. Puffins. These played a role in proving your appeal in the Pokemon Super Contests, and it's essentially reminiscent of how you make curry in Pokemon Sword and Shield. If we compare the two, you pick out berries to add to the mix, and then you essentially stir it up. Rightfully so, in the curry version of this, you have to fan the flames, and you add a little bit of heart to it, but I feel like you could easily translate that to when you're making puffins. Pokech. The apps are fun, useful, and also nice to have accessible on screen. Now I don't know how they could implement them into a Diamond and Pearl remake, but I obviously made a video talking about it, but things can change, who knows? It'd be nice if they could, but again, we'll see. It was a staple in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, so it would be really weird if it didn't come back. Bicycle Puzzles. I really like these. I enjoyed them in Hoenn, and I enjoyed them even more in Sinnoh. Now, they were less complicated in Sinnoh, more depending on your speed of the bike and controlling that speed on some of them. It made a difference on whether or not you were going to get a really powerful TM or not. Amity Square. Who doesn't want to walk around with their Pokemon? Even if they had to limit the Pokemon you could walk with, just like they did before in the games. In Diamond and Pearl, they were very strict about it, but they loosened up in Platinum where you could actually bring your starter with you as well. And they added a few more cute Pokemon you could bring with you. But I think this would be a really cool idea, especially with the updated look of the game. We kind of did get a taste of this in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So who knows, maybe they could bring this into a Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake. A suitable replacement for HMs. Let's be honest, HMs are kind of a thing of the past. Ever since Sun and Moon, we've been less reliant on having a HM slave, or having a Pokemon that had to have an HM move learned on it. Admittedly, they were a nice way of blocking a path to prevent you from going the wrong way, and to encourage you to battle gym leaders so that you could unlock areas that you couldn't access before. Now maybe, this is just a theory, now that the bicycle seemingly replaces the HM for Surf in the Pokemon Sword and Shield games, maybe the same thing can be implemented with all the other HMs that are available in the Sinnoh region. This includes Strength, Rock Smash, Rock Climb, and Waterfall. I mean, Cut's going to be a little weird on that one, but who knows, maybe it could happen. Rotoms are quite powerful, apparently. And it'd be nice if they kept some form of bird taxi. The Game Corner. Take out the gambling aspect if you must, but keep something where we can exchange coins or shards for items and TMs, or even TRs. The wild area. 
It's in Pokemon Sword and Shield, so realistically it should be in the next remake game. Again, I've talked about it in my previous video on how they could implement that. The Move Tutor. Specifically, the one that can exchange shards for moves. Though I suspect with the introduction of TRs, Move Tutors may be slowly phasing out. The Mobile PC. Always having access to your PC box without having to go to a Pokemon Center is actually really nice. It's a huge time saver. This especially when it comes to picking out Pokemon for max raid battles. Now I know there's some purists out there that think a mobile PC is too easy. But I'll have you know, I really enjoyed them in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and especially even more so in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And there you have it. My thoughts and opinions on things I'm hoping will be changed or brought back when and if we get a Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake. Let me know what you think should and or shouldn't return for future Pokemon games in the comments down below. What are things that you miss that the game used to have? Leave a like on the video if you liked the video, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. Oh, and also, <laughs> please turn on notifications to be informed on whenever a new video comes out. So, until then you guys, this is Solar Primal signing out, and bye for now. If you got a bit extra time, why not check out the other videos I did on my theories and predictions on a Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake.